Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing another 8th of the Great and this time we're going to be talking about contemporary romance. I've been meaning to do this video for quite a while now because I do have quite a few contemporary romances I want to recommend so it felt like it was a good time to finally get around to it. I'm going to be talking about three books that were published quite a while ago that I would almost consider to be legacy reads because I read all of them before my YouTube channel and before actually even finding out about booktube and then the rest of them, the other five, are ones that if you are into romance you probably will have heard um, mentioned within the booktube community before some of them are fairly big name ones but i'm just going to give you my opinions on them and say hey i thought that they were pretty great reads so you should definitely check them out the first one i'm going to be talking about is getting rid of matthew by jane fallon this is a really absurd story and it's highly highly entertaining it is about a woman i think her name's helen who um she's been having this long time affair with a man called matthew who's married and has kids they've been together um she's been the mistress on the side for absolute years and one day she decides do you know what enough is enough i need to dump this dude and move on because he's clearly never gonna leave his wife for me and why do i even want that anymore it's time to really start getting serious about my life and it is exactly when she makes that decision that matthew Matthew decides to finally leave his wife and end up on her doorstep when she's decided she's no longer invested in the relationship. She then decides to spark a harebrained scheme to try and get them back together so that she can have the freedom that she desperately wants. It is ridiculous, it is all about sort of um, uh, fake identities and kind of subterfuge and the whole thing is just kind of a hilarious carry-on movie wrapped up. The lead character is a little bit irritating in some ways, she makes some really terrible decisions, but the overarching arc is really nice and I generally just had a good time with it. I've reread it so many times, it's a real like comfort easy read for me, and I think if you like some of the hilarity of more of the modern day romances which are very kind of fan fiction-y tropey sort of style, this one is really leaning into that as well. Like. I could totally see this actually being a fanfic um, for any number of the various fandoms out there if you just replaced a bunch of the names. Um, so really, really entertaining, really good fun. One that gets a little bit more serious and it's kind of got a more lush romantic feel to it is The Blue Hour by Kate Thompson. Kate Thompson is an Irish uh, romance writer that more people really need to know about. I've read several of her books and I've had a good time with all of them. This is my favourite though from her and it's about a woman who is in an abusive relationship who then um, leaves leaves her partner and ends up trying to take some time for herself while staying with a friend of a friend in um, sort of rural France and it's her opportunity to heal and then potentially find budding love through that. So because of that there are trigger warnings for abuse relationship and an attempted rape potentially even an actual like successful rape I can't quite remember at the beginning of the book so please do know that going in. Um, what I really enjoy about this book as well is the person who she ends up staying with is an artist and it's really interesting hearing about kind of his artistic process and sort of the arts in general whether it be fine arts or photography are a really core theme through not only this book but all of Kate Thompson's work in general. Um, most of the, of the characters in her books work within the arts kind of community in some way shape or form so if like me you enjoy art in general I think you'll appreciate all of these and I do like the space that she gives for the kind of growth of our main character and that healing process and it's a really slow gentle um, kind of slow burn romance that just has a lush feeling to it she's very keen on on um, descriptions and really invoking a setting so it definitely had a more like I say kind of romantic wistful feeling to it than some of the more modern romances that I've read recently. The last legacy one is Innocence by Kath Kathleen Tessero. Kathleen Tessero, I've read a few of her books as well and they're all generally really good but again this is my favourite from her and this one is about a woman who um, there's kind of two timelines going on. She comes to London from America to train in an acting school and it's about her trying to get her big break and then we also follow her like either like a decade or 15 years later, I can't quite remember which, and she's basically like given up on her dreams, has a kid and it's about her trying to really find herself again and there is a romance that goes along with each one of them. Because she's an actor, um, the theatre and acting and sort of the arts in general again is a really common thread through for this. So if you like performing arts, I think this one will appeal to you. Um, there's a very common trend in the books that I really enjoy, funnily enough. Um, what I really liked about this is it talked about kind of 
the importance of um, the paths that we don't take but also the importance of taking control and realizing that actually it's never too late to follow your dreams um, even if those dreams have changed and that's completely fine. There's also just some generally really interesting conversations about what it means to love what you do and I really love the later on love interest um, who talks about loving piano but how when you love something you don't have to like it all the time and as somebody who has like had a career being paid to do what she loves and kind of taking a hobby and making it into a full-time career I completely get what he's on about and it's something which I found really really fascinating um, but yeah so a really great one and we're back my camera battery died so uh, let's jump in with what we were talking about it is much much later apologies if the setup or the lighting is different but I believe I was about to tell you about Flatshare by Beth O'Leary I think so Flatshare is about um, two people who end up sharing a flat but through two different times so the guy of this um, kind of pairing is he works um, nights so he's not around in the evening and then he wants someone who can like share the flat who's out during the day to help with the cost of rent but they won't actually have to bump into each other and they are indeed sharing a bedroom so it's about their developing romance as they kind of leave little notes for each other and then their kind of inevitable meeting and then what kind of springs up from there but it's also really interesting because the sort of subplot that's happening is um, the main woman is realizing that her previous relationship was rather abusive and basically the guy was gaslighting her the whole time it's about her kind of coming to that realization and sort of exploring the healing process of that and the main guy his brother is in jail and it's about his like um what's it called like probationary period his um his kind of like plea to to try and get his case retried and it's about their sort of relationship developing i really liked how well fleshed out all of the characters were in this particular romance and i also really loved the kind of slow burn of these little notes and the way that these two characters could build a real like emotional connection before they'd even seen each other was something that i definitely appreciated the next book on my list is the bromance book club which is by lissa cole maybe sorry again don't have any of the authors so this one is about a sports hero i think he's in baseball who finds out that his wife has been faking her orgasms the entire marriage and actually not only that that really is kind of the conversation that sparks this huge discussion in their relationship about all the various things that they've both sort of been faking so it looks like they're going to break up and then his fellow um sort of teammates step in and it turns out that a bunch of them are part of a like secret book club where they read romance romance books and then use them to try and fix their relationships and it's really a conversation about toxic masculinity and kind of the give and take in a relationship. I really really like this series because this particular book even um, highlights the idea of like ha marriage is not happily ever after and that relationships need continual work. There's definitely a tendency in romance books to go for and like contemporary romance to go for the big proposal at the end being the like happily ever after I do and moving on and I love the fact that this book focuses on a married couple and about trying to fix the problems of a pre-established couple due to communication issues rather than just being like yeah it's all about kind of love at first sight and then first getting together in the excitement of a new romance um, because it means that there's something for people going much further along. Um, I also like the book club element of it, I thought it was very cute and I really like the conversations about toxic masculinity as I've said before, it's really interesting and it has a lot of meta analysis about romance books in general that I thought was really really interesting. Another one that does really well for meta analysis of romance books is Beach Read. So this is about an author who um, normally writes romance books but she's got a total uh, writer's block because she's finding out that her parents are getting a divorce because her dad has been cheating on her mum for absolute years. So this naturally ruins her belief in the happily ever after so she takes kind of a little bit of a mini break um, with this like lake house kind of situation and her next door neighbour is actually a guy who is also a writer that she knows from her creative writing days like the course and he writes gritty literary novels and it's about a challenge that they do where they try and take on writing each other's genres and they help each other um, to do the research for it and in doing so kind of she goes on a bunch of fake dates with him to help him research this romance novel that he's going to write. It's really fun because it's kind of an enemies to lovers trope with also this kind of fake dating thing thrown in and when I say enemies to lovers I actually kind of prefer irritation or like um 
bad first impressions to lovers is my preference rather than actual genuine enemies who have like a real legitimate reason to not like each other when it's more of a oh I thought you were a bit more like this but as I've got to know you it turns out that you are much nicer than I thought like I much prefer that one and this definitely really leads into that and it also has some really interesting conversations about the process of writing romance why romance is so popular and kind of the view of it as being like trashy in comparison to literary books and was really really fun in general if you want to talk again like irritation to lovers I also really enjoyed Getting Rid of Matthew by Talia Hibbert yes uh, so this one is about Chloe who has a chronic illness and it's about her getting on with a guy called Red who is the superintendent in her building and he's going to help her with this particular bucket list that she has of like trying to get out and really like re-embrace her life because since her diagnosis of chronic illness she's allowed that to kind of hold her back and she wants to um, re-embrace taking a venture and taking chances. I generally really enjoyed this and it was lovely to see representation of somebody with a chronic illness though how good that representation is I'm not going to comment on because I don't have a chronic illness and also no chronic illness experience is like a monolith so it might be accurate for some but deeply inaccurate for others um, but I did like the kind of slow burn of their relationship and I just generally really enjoyed them. Red was lovely like he was a cool character in general so it was one that was really sweet and I'm really really interested in checking out the later books in the series because it focuses on Chloe sisters who also sound really entertaining and I've heard good things about them. And then the final book I want to talk about is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall I believe and this one is a fake dating trope and it's one of the only fake dating tropes that I've genuinely really really enjoyed. I like the idea of the fake dating trope but I often find it's done um, in a way that I don't personally like or just in, in my opinion not done very well whereas I really really liked this one. It is about a guy who is a little bit of a kind of train wreck. His dad's a famous rock star and he kind of gets seen in the tabloids always as being a bit of a mess and he works for a charity um, organization who are hosting a big ball and to clean up his image his uh, boss has asked him to bring along a nice clean cut date to this charity event so that that way the donors feel confident in supporting an, organi an organization that affiliates with him. So he asks a friend of a friend to be a fake boyfriend who is a very straight-laced, clean-cut kind of guy and it's about their relationship kind of growing um, from this fake dating moving forward. It's really interesting, it discusses kind of different forms of homophobia that can be shown, like implicit and explicit, which is really interesting and also looks at as well like the cost of celebrity and the idea of having your life slashed across the tabloids and the lack of trust that you would have with people because of that and just generally I really enjoyed their it's a real like opposites attract kind of a relationship and I loved the way that the fake dating ended up playing out this kind of slow burn going on in the background was fantastic so I really really enjoyed that one so that is it for me these are some contemporary romances that I think are pretty pretty great I've not read any recently but I do have a few on my kindle that I want to jump back into I find contemporary romance is a serious hit or miss for me a lot of them it's either kind of a three star or a five star read for me personally and um, so these are all ones that I gave five stars to and thought were really really good so have you read any of these some of them are fairly big names on booktube would you like to see ones that I thought were just a bit meh I don't normally do videos on books that I find a bit meh but I do have some that I didn't like in the contemporary romance or I just wasn't bothered by so I would be happy to talk about those if you are interested, do let me know in the comments down below. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.